Oh, does that indeed set the mood here? It, it is indeed one of the more unfair characterizations, that of taking the proud, very social, and very intelligent animal known as the pig and use a derivative of their genus to describe the wanton waste of those in government. They are indeed the porkers. And when you start to learn how they waste your tax dollars with nary a reasonable thought, you will have greater respect for one of the most numerous large mammals on Earth. And we speak about the pig, not the lawmaker. Our weekly dig into the beltway through of the two-legged porkers, though. Welcome back to the Vice President for Policy and Communications at Citizens Against Government Waste, Leslie Page, joins us. Leslie, good to see you again. Hey, Ed. Happy Friday. To you also. Happy Friday. Happy Valentine's And by Valentine. the way, Ed, you know, it's not fair to pigs. It really isn't. It, it, <laughs> They're much I keep smarter saying than we that. give them credit for. What you did not see was we had video of these wonderful pigs. They're just having food. They're just eating. It's unfair well, to, it's and, unfair you know, to hurt the pigs. Well, and you know, Citizens Against Government Waste... Yeah, our, our mascot is a pig, so, you know, what can I say? But, uh, yeah, we really, it just doesn't seem fair to the pig to be making these comparisons, but what are you going to do? Yeah, well, the poor pig. Let's go ahead and, uh, and get the real porkers out here. Let's start out with the Federal Employee Union, uh, known as AFGE. Oh, yeah. And i got to tell you, this is hysterical. The national president, J. David Cox, in an address to his members, talking about the fact that they are powerful, saying, we get bigger, we get stronger, we fight harder, saying, and I'm going to quote now, we are a force to be reckoned with, and we are a force that will open up the biggest can of whoop-ass on anyone. It's good to see that everybody's getting along in Washington. What's the big deal here with the Federal Employees Union, Leslie? Well, for one thing, it's good to have clarification on who runs the show up here. Um, it's very important to know that, and now you know. And uh, and essentially, he was giving a speech uh, on all kinds of issues, and there were several members of Congress who either followed him or were there at the time, and they all, they're all they all there to sort of pay fealty to uh, the big unions. And I think one of the reasons they're as incensed as they are potentially is because we actually have an opportunity here to cut wasteful spending, get some efficiency into the system, maybe, and, and sequester, which is their nemesis. I mean, the unions are absolutely apoplectic about the sequester. And the Democrats and some Republicans and the unions are going to make it their life's work in the next six months to get rid of this sequester. They want to lift those caps. They w and and, and so the president's already said he's going to try by $74 billion that, you know, he's, he's already got his budget, already breaks the budget caps, and they're going to try very, very hard. And Republicans essentially, uh, you know, could be seen to collude because they're very interested in lifting the caps on the defense side of the equation. Uh, so you can see that there's some serious danger for taxpayers here. With regard then to that serious danger, Leslie, if you would expand on that a little bit here, because, I mean, you have the federal employees here, and they're saying we deserve the protection here. You have Democrats and Republicans who basically are, as you said, fealty to these folks, and they're basically saying we'll get behind you, we'll do whatever you want. What's the dollar danger here as far as waste is concerned oh. to the consumer? Well, let me just segue a little bit. You know, this comes on the very day, essentially, that the Government Accountability Office testified before Congress and released its biennial uh, high-risk list, which is a list of compendium of all of these federal programs and areas of concern that are wasteful, vulnerable to waste, fraud, abuse, and mismanagement. I mean, I think it's not an irony that this comes out the same day as we hear this guy threatening any member of Congress who, in fact, it's not about, he doesn't, they're not interested in waste, fraud, and abuse. They, they basically are saying anybody who threatens our interest, and their interest is to keep the government, uh, to keep as many employees as they have and not have, to, and not have to winnow back or cut anything. And I don't see how you can have us cutting waste and fraud and mismanagement and still keep the, the bureaucracy as bloated as it is. I mean, if, if nothing else, we certainly have to be able to get rid of underperforming employees, which ah. is almost impossible in the federal employment situation you can it's very difficult to get rid of them there it is and you, when you read the GAO's report it's actually appalling the mismanagement that's going on so somebody is not doing something right here shouldn't we be looking at what's working and get rid of the, the, what's not working and, and that includes the employees that are doing it we should point out too that to your point about employees this union the AFGE they have 291,000 members on the rolls right now and they're looking to get to 300,000 by the end of the year oh, yeah. so they're looking to increase at a time when everybody else is looking to cut so there's your waste absolutely right and in fact they're not the only ones one of the one of the items on the high risk list ironically is the US Postal Service which we, you and I maybe have already talked about it at, at, at well I'll tell you what I'm gonna do here segment, Leslie I'm gonna ask you to hold on one second because we're up against sure. the clock we're gonna take a break I want to come back and talk about the Postal Union and a few others here right after break so please stand by because across America not just the Postal Union but there's land there are offices owned by the government you and me we paid for it and it's just sitting there doing nothing 
earning nothing. We'll talk about that and so much more. Government waste right here on Midpoint. All right, back to the trough with the Vice President for Policy and Communications at Citizens Against Government Waste. Leslie Page joins us. Leslie, you alluded to this a little bit, and this is the GOA coming out with their high-risk list for 2015 if we're looking at government waste. And you talked about the United States Postal Service here. I mean, I can't think of a time in the last 10 years when the USPS hasn't been in some sort of financial trouble. Well, the U.S. Postal Service has been on the GAO's high-risk list since 2009. I mean, they're not the worst on the list. Medicare has been on the list for since 1990, which was the first year that they did the list. So that gives you some idea. Uh, but the Postal Service is, you know, you mentioned the whole issue of rationalizing our federal workforce. I mean, that is essentially what's going on at the Postal Service right now. They are seeking, instead of trying to right-size their operations to meet the dwindling na- mail volume, they are trying to find new business revenue streams going get outside their mission and start delivering groceries and you know same day delivery service and doing and even banking i mean there's been some discussion of banking services and this is not so much about it's about revenue streams it's also about rationalizing a workforce that is there it's bloated right now compared to what they have how has In that fact, been you know, received they have on lowered capitol their hill, workforce though, Leslie. How, how how has that been received on capitol hill when they're talking about cuz i heard that banking and shopping services that's ridiculous well, it is ridiculous. Of course, it's ridiculous. But, you know, I, I, I've been doing this for a long period of time. I'm always a little bit wary when, uh, when some of these ridiculous ideas start to seep into uh, people's consciousness and they start pushing very hard. I mean, it's coming from somewhere. Now, we may want to dismiss it as ridiculous, but I wouldn't be so quick to do that because some of the more ridiculous ideas have started to come <laughs> to fruition and over a period of years. And don't give them any ideas because they will, they will go that way. We, you mentioned the and, U.S. You know, so, I mean, and, and in fact, just on the U.S. Postal sure. Service, one last thing, Ed, is they have, they have lowered their, they have gotten rid of a lot of their employees, but guess what? They're not saving any money. The GAO itself just put out a report saying, yes, it's in fact the case that they have lowered their, the number of their employees, but they're giving the employees that they have bigger contracts more money. So they're not, they're not saving anything. Something else that I saw on this whole list here, and you just alluded to this very quickly, is Medicare. Highly susceptible to fraud and mismanagement. I feel like saying, really? We had to have this down in writing? But, I mean, the American people are going to be the ones asking now, all right, Leslie, you're bringing this to our attention here. How do we solve it? What's going to be necessary to solve it? What's, What's at the core here? Well, they have been making, I mean, they will tell you they've been making some progress, and and that may be true, but, you know, again, data is important, and and the data gets very manipulated. I will say, though, that some of the most potent, effective management tools that the uh, CMS, which is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, has, they have sidelined these tools, these auditing tools, and including the Recovery Audit uh, Contracting Program, which um, is a very effective tool and has returned like almost $10 billion to the trust fund over a period of time at no cost to taxpayers and that program has been more or less sidelined for almost 18 months now uh, because the hospitals are not happy um, because they have to return money to the trust fund money that they should not have been paid in the first place so you have to kind of look behind the numbers you know we're, we talk about this a lot in Washington watch out for these numbers you've got to verify the GAO went in and verified for example that the GSA, which is the General Services Administration that does all of our property management basically for the federal government, they came out and said, hey, we saved $3.8 billion. We reduced our footprint. Yeah, but they have millions of square feet of wasted property and wasted offices just sitting there doing nothing. Right. Exactly. And guess what? They made a big deal about this, and the GAO said, just a second, let's go look at those numbers. And they dug deeper, and they found out that the data was absolutely flawed and inaccurate. They had double counted. They had played games with the baseline so that basically some stuff got pushed into the next year and didn't get counted in the current year. I mean, you've you've got to be very skeptical about this. Um, especially among agencies that are known to have management problems. You've got to look at everything that's being said and promoted and ask a lot more questions. And the GAO, to its credit, is doing it. It's, it's incredible. See, there you go. Be skeptical, and that's why the motto of this show is every single day, question everything. That's what we like to do. We want to remind everybody that if you want to learn a little bit more about what kind of waste is going on here, and remember, don't hold the poor pig to it. It's just unfortunate for all that, all right? CAGW.org, that's Citizens Against Government Waste. Leslie, always a pleasure to talk to you. I know that we're going to miss you next week. We will still talk to you folks next week, so we'll see you in a couple weeks when you come back. Have a great weekend. Take care.
Uh, they have been part of the American broadcast landscape for 40 years. SNL, legendary. Let's relive a few moments next.